1370 WOCA. Ocala. All right, five minutes after 11 o'clock, I've got a good book to tell you about. And, and, and I love this. There's kind of a, a parallel story in this story that I, that I just love. I love the parallel story uh, approach. Uh, we have a book. It is called The Edge of Falling, and it is written by our next guest. I guess you knew that. Rebecca Searle is her name. It says here that she is an obsessive lover of all things pop culture. Uh, and, and, and I guess a, a novel would be considered um, part of pop culture. Uh, she's a blogger for the Vampire Diaries for the uh, New York Magazine's Vulture and a best-selling author. And here's what I mean when I say uh, a parallel story. We had this uh, discussion once about um, social suicide, where people, they don't literally kill themselves in, in the traditional sense of the word suicide. They they decide that they're not going to do anything more and they, you know, at 30 years old, just spend the rest of their lives on the couch watching TV. They have virtually, you know, d you know exited from this life, right? Oh. Well, in, in Rebecca's story, she's got a, a young girl, a heroine, I guess you would say, who saves another girl from killing herself physically. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and then in and then the course of reading this, you realize that she, even though she's kind of a um, born with a golden spoon or a silver spoon, whatever they say, mm -hmm. uh, she's also got her own issues that she needs to be saved from. And then there's and there's so there's this guy, which makes it a kind of a cool book. It's a, got a romance going in it, yeah. and it's it's described as a, a good book for teen readers. So, and I wouldn't disagree, although I'm no teen, Robin. <laughs> and, I, and I did enjoy the book. Rebecca Searle, you've written a really good book. Good morning, Rebecca. Hi, good morning. I hope, I didn't, I hope I didn't slaughter the description of the book. You're going to do a better job at it than me. But, no, I love it. Please. But I love the, uh, the, uh, the, the parallel there because she wasn't committing suicide, but she needed to be rescued, didn't she? Yeah, I mean, you know, the whole tagline of the book is you can't save anyone until you save yourself. But I think that's basically what she you know, is on a journey to realize is that, like, we, we have to be our own hero, ultimately. And, and, and that's our first order of business. Yeah, yeah. But I, but I guess if I'm, if I'm getting ready to witness somebody jumping off a bridge, I think I'll put off saving myself for a little bit just to see if I can do something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, you know, as, as the book unfolds, you begin to realize that what you're being told happened in May is not exactly the story. And she kind of lets us in more and more until what actually happened that night on the rooftop. And, and events are sort of more reversed, yes. I'd say, than, than you think. Yes. And, and we don't want to tell too much because it is a novel after mm -hmm. all. So. Of uh, course. The, the uh, cover is very uh, intriguing in that it does kind of illustrate what the story is going to be because the jumper is wearing red shoes. Yeah. Um, thank you so much. Uh, it, you know, it was really important to me that the cover... Um, be emotionally evocative and also be, I think, like a, a scene from New York City. I, I really wanted it to feel like it was Manhattan. Um, and that was one of the, my motivations for writing this book is I, I really wanted to tell a story in New York. I've lived here for seven and a half years and it was time. So thank you. I'm, I'm delighted with the cover as well. It seems to be getting a good, good response. So where did you move there from? Um, I moved there from Southern California. I went to USC, and I moved right after graduation. And I grew up in Hawaii and also Philadelphia, so a little bit all over the place. And and, and I think those seven years in New York have uh, had an effect on your, your accent. I think you got a little bit of it going there. Do I? Yeah. <laughs> Just I, don't, I don't know if that's a compliment or not. No, it's a compliment. I, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm originally from there, and I've mine has softened. and, and uh, So I know the effect of moving somewhere else and... and, and uh, what would you assimilating the the accent of the area, uh, Rebecca? How how um how many books have you written? This is my second novel. Oh, um, my yeah, my first was called When You Are Mine. It came out about two years ago. It is a modern retelling of Romeo and Juliet from Rosalind's perspective. She uh, excuse me, Romeo's ex. Oh, oh okay. that's intriguing. Wait a minute, were it's you on fun. the show before? I feel like we. I think I so. think so. I yeah. Yeah. You and yeah, back in 2012. Yeah, so this is my second book. Okay, and second appearance on our show. We, we're in a new studio now, so. Oh, fantastic. Of course, that doesn't matter to you. You're, you're, you're on the phone. Uh, I'm phoning in, yeah. <laughs> uh, so the, the Edge of Falling, it is described as for teenage readers, but, uh, but I, I think that's a publisher's thing. They want you to have a, have a, a what do you want to say, um, a demographic, right? 
Yeah, certainly. I mean, listen, the young adult is, is, is uh, yes, our target is for teens. I think mostly because uh, the, the protagonists are our teen characters. Our characters are teenagers. Yeah. However, like, we're really seeing that half of readers of YA are adults now. I mean, I think yeah. these are really stories that are resonating with people of all ages. Yeah, I think so, too. So, th- so is this a continuation of your first book? Is there something c- connected to it? It's not. It's a standalone novel. I have a series beginning in October, but so far just two standalone novels. So this is a story all into itself. And your heroine is very brave because she tries to save someone and then she's going through turmoil of her own. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's really, it's, it's a story about a girl who's coming to terms with the loss of, of her younger sister and also her role in the death of, of, of her younger sister. And um, really her journey toward self-forgiveness Um and and so yeah, I mean, I think I think anybody dealing with grief is brave if they face it and move through it. And I think that's that's really her story above all else. So I think I think um, spring break is still going on here in in Florida. So mm-hmm. I, I would imagine that some people who are locals who still participate in the spring break phenomenon probably go and hang out with the tourists over on the beach. I mean, yeah, you think that's probably right. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, I mean, is that, would that be like a, an? Um, how would that feel to you if you walked onto Daytona Beach, and there on the beach was somebody lying there reading your book? Would that be like a home run for you? Oh my goodness, it would be a total home run. That has yet <laughs> to happen to me, and I always expect to get on the subway and see somebody reading it. And I, I, I have not experienced that moment yet, but it is definitely in my top ten, possibly my top two. Oh, so, yeah, that, that's like having a hit, having a record out there, and hearing somebody listening to the radio or listening to your CD yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly right. How do you manage? Well, was, how, how do you manage to get into the psyche of your individual characters because their personalities vary so much, as well as their gender? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, it's it's. I think that. The teenage years are, are so interesting because I think it's, it's really a variation of what we continue to experience, but to uh, varying degrees of intensity. Um, and I think part of what we do as writers, like, we're, we're naturally empathetic. And so I always say I don't, you know, I don't write books about, about teenage girls or teenage boys. I write books about people. And, um, and, you know, the characters sort of uh, reveal themselves to me as we go. It's a very fun process. Hmm. And, and, and so, so as other authors have told us, the the characters um, become alive for you, and you're reading the book in a, in a sense prior to us ever reading it. Yeah, absolutely. And it it can be very sad when a book ends. I just yesterday finished the second book of a series that I'm working on that comes out in October, and and it was very bittersweet because you really do feel like these characters become real people, and they become friends, and and you rely on each other. Hmm. How did you manage to get Aster, to the the uh, uh, character of, of Aster? How did I get to him? Yeah. Um, probably based on some disastrous romances I had in, in my earlier years. Um, oh. But he, he's, he's, you know, he's, a, he's really a foil for Kagi. I mean, my mom always says to me that, that people come into your life for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. And he's definitely a reason and a season, not a lifetime. <laughs> and, you know, uh, he, he sort of uh, illuminates some things for her and, and takes her to some dark and dangerous places, but I think ultimately allows her uh, to, to start healing. Just think about uh, unless you're married to the person or the sister of the person, from a woman's perspective, every man is either a reason or a season. That's right. There's, Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it only takes one, right? <laughs> it only takes one. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, I have a copy of The Edge of Falling. I'd like to give it away. Somebody out there has somebody who will love this book. You probably will love this book if you're listening and you're and you're not a teen because I did and Robin did and mm-hmm. I have a copy. So call me if you want it. It's called The Edge of Falling. Rebecca Searle spells her last name S-E-R-L-E and the rest of us have to go buy it. Rebecca, do you have a website? I do. RebeccaSearle.com. Please come visit me. Okay. And the book is everywhere on Amazon and Barnes & Noble and everything, yeah. right? Everywhere books are sold. Support yeah. the local small bookstore, too, as well. We should say that now and then. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, uh, Rebecca, it was, thank you for being on the air with us. And uh, if you're ever in Central Florida, we have a beautiful studio at the mall. And uh, come in. Come in and say Wonderful. hi. And do, a, do, do an interview here. Okay, great. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Rebecca. We will take a little break. And we'll be right back. The 
biggest air show in the South is back in Lakeland. Sun and Fun International Fly-In celebrates its 40th year April 1st through 6th. This year promises to be bigger, faster, and louder than ever before. Experience the heart-thumping, awe-inspiring performance of the U.S. Navy Blue Angels and the Air Force's F-22 Raptor. See thousands of aircraft, both in the air and on display, and an open flight line of historic warbirds. Sun and Fun offers fun for the whole family. With daily air shows, a kid's zone, and lots of great food. Make Saturday, April 5th, a day the family will remember. With two shows for the price of one, see the Blue Angels perform at 3 p.m. and stay for the night air show, which includes aerobatic flyers, pyrotechnics, and a dazzling fireworks display. Sun and Fun International Fly-In celebrating its 40th year, April 1st through 6th in Lakeland. It's bigger. It's faster. It's louder. It's Sun and Fun. Here are today's headlines from the source WOCA. Veterans living in the state of Florida will get some additional benefits under a bill signed by Governor Rick Scott. On Monday, Scott signed the Florida GI Bill at the National Guard Armory in Panama City. The bill offers a tuition break to honorably discharged veterans regardless of when they moved to the state. The tuition break will cost an estimated $12 million. The bill also includes college scholarships for National Guard members and sets aside money to renovate armories and acquire land adjacent to existing military installations in the state. It also waives professional licensing fees up to five years after a veteran is discharged. Florida has roughly one and a half million veterans and there are an estimated 61,000 active military personnel stationed in the state. The Marion County Commission is hearing from citizens today regarding an anti-dog tethering ordinance. At today's meeting in the Commission Auditorium, the new regulations drafted by County Attorney Guy Minter will be considered. Those regulations prohibit the unsupervised, unattended outdoor tethering of dogs. However, a 90-minute exception to the rule would allow dogs to remain tethered and unsupervised so that the pet owner may tend to a temporary task within the home. Currently, the county county code allows tethering for any length of time so long as the animal is humanely secured and has access to shelter and water. The busy season that Florida hoteliers and others in the hospitality and tourism industries hoped for is becoming a reality as the final month of the season begins. Reservations and room rates are trumping those of 2013, and this year the calendar is providing a bonus of sorts. The Easter holiday weekend, April 19th and 20th, falls on the late side, and that means there are three extra weeks of the lucrative high season this year. The polar vortex dumping snow and plummeting temperatures in the northern states is also also being credited with the increase in tourism. When area visitor bureaus commissioned surveys of vacation property managers, 88% of respondents said they expected reservations to be greater or equal to those from the same period last year. And Lee County deputies say someone stole an 80-foot semi-truck carrying nearly 200,000 eggs over the weekend. The semi-truck and trailer was stolen from a South Fort Myers 7-Eleven Saturday night. Joe Carlisle is the owner and operator and says he had been parking his semi-truck and trailer behind the 7-Eleven for the last five months. While he was just a mile down the road at his Fort Myers home, someone hopped into his rig and took off with it, stealing close to 200,000 eggs along with it. There were no surveillance cameras behind the 7-Eleven to capture the crook. The truck cost close to $250,000. A Jacksonville woman says she was humiliated and violated at a South Florida airport. Kareen Teamer says she was returning to the United States after undergoing cosmetic surgery overseas and says a customs agent went too far to verify her procedures. Teamer chose a doctor in the Dominican Republic to perform her cosmetic surgery in order to save money on her tummy tuck and liposuction procedures. But she says her trip ended with embarrassment at Miami International Airport. Teamer says she took photographs of herself so she could see the results. One photo showed her genital area and the photos were never meant to be seen by anyone else. But she says she was forced to show them to a U.S. Customs and Border Protection agent who questioned her even after presenting medical documents. The delay at the checkpoint caused her to miss her flight to Jacksonville. After filing a complaint, Teamer caught another flight to Jacksonville and now U.S. Customs is looking into the sexual assault allegations. And those are the headlines from the source, WOCA 96.3 FM and 1370 AM. 
The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Life jackets save lives. Wear it, Florida. For this afternoon, mostly sunny, pleasant, and warm. High 83 to 85. Clear tonight, low 57 to 64. Mostly sunny and warm. For tomorrow, high 84 to 86. And Thursday, partial sun, high 84 to 87. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm E.D. Rob. Farmland coming to the big screen. That story coming up on This Land of Ours. Why does Daddy spend so much time caring for the land, Mom? When he's taking care of the land, he's really taking care of us. How? He wants us to have clean water to drink, fresh air to breathe, wildlife to enjoy, and he wants to leave this land better than he found it. Sounds like Daddy loves us a lot. He sure does. Conservation, there's something in it for you. Call or visit your local USDA service center. Brought to you by the Natural Resources Conservation Service. Grab the popcorn because it's time for a movie date. As the farm Focus feature-length documentary Farmland has been confirmed to be released across 60 major national markets in the U.S. starting on May 1st. Although consumers seem to have an increasing desire to know where and how their food is grown, most Americans have never stepped foot on a farm or ranch or even talked to the people who grow and raise the food we eat. But Farmland aims to help open those doors as it takes an intimate look at the lives of farmers and ranchers in their 20s, all of whom are now responsible.